Welcome to the Scholastic Fall 2023 preview. I'm Liza Baker, VP and publisher of Picture Books, and I'm so pleased to share a few of our exciting forthcoming stories. First, we have Why Did the Monsters Cross the Road? from beloved and best-selling duo R.L. Stein, celebrated creator of Goosebumps, and Mark Brown, beloved creator of the Arthur series. In their third picture book collaboration, we meet grumpy monster Honey and her persistent monster friend, Funny, who is on a quest to cheer her up with an endless array of silly jokes. Funny is unsuccessful until an unexpected surprise splash finale ultimately inspires monster-sized crack-up. Next up, we have The Baddies, a charming new picture book from best-selling and longtime creative partners Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler. Perfect for Halloween, The Baddies tells the story of three spooky villains, a troll, a witch, and a ghost, who just love being bad. When a little girl moves to their neighborhood, the three baddies are determined to scare her, but they soon discover that little girls might not be so easy to scare after all. And in the end, it's bravery and kindness that win the day. Next up, we have our first Fish Tank Friends adventure, This Tank is Mine, written and illustrated by house talent, Jonathan Fenske. Angelo loves his fish tank, but what happens when a new fish moves in? This new series is perfect for fans of Elephant and Piggy, and two-time Geisel honor recipient Jonathan Fenske teaches kids that sharing can be fun. The challenges and benefits of sharing are so resonant for today's young readers, and This Tank is Mine explores these themes with sensitivity and humor. And now, let's hear directly from some of our esteemed authors. Hey everyone, I am Tanisha T. Moore, and I am the author of I Am My Ancestor's Wildest Dream, where we follow our young hero connecting his lineage to dynamic and prolific Black men, men such as Tupac and Biggie, reminding him that even though he's young, his voice can still make a difference. Or like Kobe Bryant, where he learns that if he digs deep, he can channel his inner mamba, his greatness to make that game winning shot. Or maybe he can start a bit of good trouble, like Representative John Lewis for the betterment of all people. It was through my grief for Chadwick Boseman that I penned these words in this book. This is my love letter to these men. I absolutely, Cannot wait for y'all to read this book. I hope that it sparks you into doing greatness to leave your mark on this earth. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Jared Chapman and I'm the author and the illustrator of Seals Are Jerks. Seals Are Jerks is a picture book about a little girl who is under the impression that penguins and seals are the very best of friends. Until one day she's told otherwise, uh, she doesn't accept it. So she goes off in search of the truth for herself. The book is about when we first realize that nature doesn't necessarily operate the way that we might hope that it does. The book was actually inspired by my daughter. She didn't realize that in wild animals, um, in nature, they get hungry the same way that that we do. uh, And they go and they hunt. And sometimes, in the case of seals, that means penguins. I hope that you will uh, enjoy reading Seals or Jerks. Hi, I'm Gracie Zhang. I am the author and illustrator of Lala's Words from Scholastic. And I'm going to talk to you about my new book, When Ruben Plays, that is coming out this summer. So Ruben is a story about a boy who desperately wants to play in the orchestra that his sister does. But when he (laughs) tries to play the violin, he realizes music doesn't come naturally to him. I was forced to learn piano as a child and I absolutely hated it. Um, And I think part of the reason I hated it so much was because I didn't think that there was a future for me in it. There's a lot of the memories of like having to perform in front of other children and realizing you're no good. 
The story is really about just pursuing a passion no matter your skill level and all the wonderful things that can happen within a community when a child is encouraged to do what they want. So I hope you enjoy when Ruben plays. Hola, hi, I'm Carmen Agraditi, and I'm so excited because I'm here to tell you about a new book. It's a folk tale I heard as a little girl. It's called Carina Feline, at least that's my title for it, because it's a folk tale retold. It's illustrated by the marvelous Henry Cole, and the story is about un perico, a parrot, who falls in love with una gata. Meow. Oh, yes, a cat. Mm. Will true love triumph, or will it end in catastrophe? The story is one I loved as a child, is told around the world. I'm doing a slightly Caribbean telling. It's a satisfying ending that most children will love. I think it's perfect. And Henry was Henry. His illustrations are marvelous. I hope you'll enjoy reading Carina Felina as much as we enjoyed working on it. Hi, my name is Rachel Vale. I'm the author of the new book, Sometimes I Could Plume, illustrated by Hei Wan Yum. This is a book about Katie Honors, who you might remember from Sometimes I'm Bomb Blue and Sometimes I Grumble Squinch. But in Sometimes I Could Plume, Katie wants to define herself as a really brave kid. It's just hard because she has trouble saying goodbye when she's brought to school. And when that happens, Katie kaplooms. But she learns that being brave doesn't require you to never be scared or to grumble squinch all your feelings down. You can be brave even while you kaplume. I wrote this book because my younger son, Liam, had terrible trouble saying goodbye all the time, but especially at school. And Liam's all grown up now and saying goodbye is easier, at least for him, if not for me. But we struggled through that together and learned together what it really means to be brave. Hi, I am Peter H. Reynolds, author and illustrator of a bunch of books you might know, like The Word Collector, Happy Dreamer. And I'm here in my studio in Dedham, Massachusetts, my hometown. And I'm here with my collaborator and Son. <laughs> son, yes, you are my son. Yeah. And what is your name? Henry Rocket Reynolds. Henry Rocket Reynolds, yes, right there, Henry Rocket Reynolds. And we collaborated on this book, which is called All We Need Is Love and, and a Really Soft Pillow. pillow. Where's your pillow? You've got, you've got yeah. your pillow. And um, so, yes, we wrote this book. It's a celebration of the sweet and simple life, uh, which consists of the person that you love or the people you love. And really, you don't need that much else. Of course, Henry thinks that a soft pillow would be nice, which <laughs> I, do. I totally agree. So find someone you love, curl up with our latest book, All You Need Is Love, and a and really soft, soft pillow. pillow. And I want to be your pillow. Can I be your pillow? I'm just going to take this one too. <laughs> Chapter books and series help young readers gain confidence, reading stamina, and develop a love of reading. In just a minute, you will hear from superstars Aaron Blavey, Lauren Tarshis, and Cyan Tarnan Descupta. But first, I'm excited to tell you about some new books and continuing series. Delilah and Dominga continue to rewrite the rules in Bad Princesses Number 2, Meet Me at Midnight. It's the night of the starlit search. Delilah and Dominga scheme and plot and ruin the night for the fairest of them all. This series is just perfect for any kid who has ever felt like they just don't fit into the box. From Bad Princesses, we head to Rainbow Days. In book two, The Gold Bowl, it's Coco's birthday and Zoya wants to give her pup the perfect present. She tries out a few ideas, including a yarn necklace and colorful frosted treats. But she finally decides to paint Coco's bowl gold. With some paint and lots of glitter, Zoya creates a gift Coco is sure to love. We have not one, but two new chapter books by Newbury Honor author Christina Sertrevad. The first is book two in the Legends of Lotus Island series, which includes stories about animals, magic, and encourages kids to embrace their power to change the world. With Into the Shadow Mist, Plum and her friends encounter an unseen force that begins to destroy the trees, 
putting the entire ecosystem at risk, and Plum and her classmates must bring into action to help. The second is the third installment of the Best Wishes series, Time After Time. In this book, co-written with best-selling author Saul Maranowski, the magic bracelet comes to a girl in Texas, Lucy Usethorn, who ends up in a Groundhog Day-style time loop. With the help of her new long-distance friends, Addie and Becca, will Lucy be able to figure out her way to this time loop before it's too late? Now let's hear from our authors. How you doing, guys? It's Aaron Blavey here. I wanted to tell you all about my next project. It's called Cat on the Run, the story of the world's number one cat video star who gets accused of a crime she didn't commit and ends up having to go on the run. But because she's Kardashian famous, she's mega famous, going on the lam is easier said than done because how do you hide and prove your innocence when you're that darn famous. It's a story about a female character being underestimated. Uh, no one expects that the star of some goofy videos is going to be able to get out of this sticky situation. I hope you enjoy reading the first episode of three. There's three episodes to complete this story of how Princess proves her innocence. What would you do if two giant talking flying horses landed in your backyard and asked you to travel across the multiverse to help save their kingdom? Well, that's what happens to boy-girl twins, Kia and Kinjal, in The Secrets of the Sky. Book one, The Chaos Monster, comes out in the summer, and book two, The Poison Waves, comes out in the fall. Will Kia, with her love of science and facts, and Kinjal with his love of stories, along with their rainbow-winged magical dog, Thumbs Up, be able to travel across the multiverse, fight their foes, and help their friends. Read The Secrets of the Sky to find out. Hi everyone, I'm Lauren Tarshish. A few years ago, a reader of I Survive sent me an email and said, Lauren, you need to write about the most powerful earthquake in North American history. So of course I thought that it was the San Francisco earthquake, which I'd already written about. But in fact, this reader was sending me in the perfect direction to write about a topic that I'd never even heard of, which is the Alaska earthquake of 1964. That is the subject of my upcoming I Survive book. The research journey for this book was completely fascinating. I learned everything I could about plate tectonics, tsunami, and then I created a plot that I really challenged myself to make even more cinematic and thrilling as I usually try to do in my books. So I think this book is going to take kids on a really unforgettable adventure. I think it's going to teach them a lot, but most of all, it is going to keep them turning the pages. Our fall middle grade list has new books from Kelly Yang, Gordon Corman, Alex Gino, and so many more. Before we hear from our authors, I'm excited to share three books. First, from Lindsay Puckett, the author that gave us The Glass Witch, comes a whimsical new book that's a snicker of magic meets the sixth sense. This is the story of Begonia, who is just abandoned at a retirement home, Swamp Root Manor. And it isn't just any retirement home. It's alive, it's haunted, and everyone in it is a little bit odd. Everyone except Begonia. And while she's waiting for her oddity to arrive, the manor is in danger of closing. So Bug has to battle humans, ghosts, and her own self-doubt to save the only family she's ever known. Next is a gripping standalone story from Anne Claire Lazat. As a young teacher on Martha's Vineyard, Mary Lambert feels restless and adrift. So when a league of missionaries invite her to travel abroad, she knows it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. But the endeavor comes at a cost. The missionaries plan to save deaf children is questionable at best and requires Mary's support. What's more, the missionaries work threatens the Wampanoag and other native people's freedom and safety. Is pursuing Mary's own goals worth the price of betraying her friends and her own values? 
Together with Show Me a Sign and Set Me Free, this stunning story will enrich your understanding of deaf history and culture and forever alter your perspective on ability and disability. Finally, we have L. Campbell Wins Their Weekend, a hilarious and heartfelt debut by Ben Kahn. L. Campbell is desperate to meet their non-binary hero, TV star Nuri Grena, who is in town for a one-day event. But when L stands up to a substitute teacher who insists on misgendering them, they find themselves in Saturday detention, which means missing the meet and greet with Nuri. L is devastated. So their friends come up with a genius, or depending on how you look at it, totally bonkers scheme to break L out of detention. But sneaking out of school is only the first step in what turns out to be an epic journey full of hijinks worthy of Ferris Bueller. In a world that's increasingly keen on telling queer kids that they don't belong, or worse, that they don't exist, this joyful book about a non-binary kid feels like a crucial act of resistance. And now, let's hear directly from our authors. Hi, I'm Kelly Yang. I'm the author of the Front Desk series, and I'm so excited to bring you Top Story, the fifth book in the series. Mia and her friends go to Chinatown, San Francisco, where Mia is attending journalism camp. She's so excited to show everyone what she's got, except all the other campers are older. And Lupe, her best friend, is thinking about skipping ahead to college. <gasps> Meanwhile, Jason has a huge crush on a girl who runs a fortune cookie factory and loves to raid. That's awkward because Mia gulp has a crush on Jason. I'm so excited for you to read this incredible tale which weaves in Asian American history as well as indigenous history. Full of heart and humor, it's a story that's bound to get kids talking. And I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing me this chance to write it. Thank you for supporting the Front Desk series through all the ups and downs. It's been a roller coaster of a ride, but I can't believe it. I'm so excited and proud. Our characters are finally getting their top story. I hope you love it every bit as much as I do. Hi, I'm Justin Weinberger, author of Zombie Season, the newest addition to Scholastic's groundbreaking book plus game publishing program. Zombie Season is the story of Oliver Wax, Regina Herrera, and Jewel Artist, three kids who grew up in a California town where instead of having to deal with a fire season, they have to deal with a zombie season. Hordes of destructive undead that emerge from hiding and devour anything and everything in their path. It's a catastrophe that they've lived with their entire lives, but this year there's something extremely peculiar about the zombies they'll soon discover. A mystery that must be unraveled before it's too late if lives are to be saved. Like all my favorite zombie stories, it's not only about how our heroes survive an ever-escalating series of zombie threats, it's about how they overcome what scares them more than any zombie ever could. To me, that's the whole point of zombie stories and why I love this project. It's not about something that's out there that's coming to get us. It's about who we are and what makes us human. Hello everyone, I am Kara Alexander, and I am so excited to present my newest book, Gallowgate. You all know me best for my creepy tales for young readers, but what you may not know is that before I started writing under my pen name, I was actually writing fantasy. Now, with Gallowgate, I get to bridge both of those worlds. It has all of my favorite things. There's ghosts and ghouls, magic, monsters, quirky friends, and even a school that is basically one big haunted house. Here, students don't just learn how to fight the dead, they actually have to go out and do it. Gallowgate is a place where every reader can see themselves on the page. Like the main character, Sebastian, I always felt out of place growing up. I may not have been able to see ghosts like him, but I was still the odd one out for things that I couldn't change. In that sense, Gallowgate isn't just about magic and monsters. It's about finding the people and the places that celebrate your uniqueness. It's about finding home. I am absolutely in love with these characters and I cannot wait for you to fall in love with them as well. The dead are waiting. Are you brave enough to fight them? Hi, I'm Angela Cervantes, children's author. The Cursed Mood is my latest fiction novel, and it's a story about 11-year-old Rafael Fuentes, a young, scary storyteller. 
Now, Raphael lives with his younger sister, Brianna, and his grandparents. He's been living with his grandparents since the day his mom was incarcerated. And living with his grandparents has brought Raphael peace of mind, new friends, and a stability he never had while living with his mom. But soon, all of that is threatened when one day he's told that his mom is coming home soon from prison and also he's riding home from school and a strange neighbor comes up to him and tells him that he can't tell any scary stories while there's a blood moon hanging in the sky. Rafa brushes off the warning. I mean, scary stories are sort of his thing and they're harmless fun, right? Hi. My name is Trevor Henderson. I'm an artist and writer who lives in Toronto, Canada. And I love drawing ghosts, monsters, and other spooky things and writing little stories for them to exist in. I wrote the middle grade kids book, Scare Waves. Scare Waves is about the kids who live in a town called Beacon Point in the 1990s, a town that's full of unexplained disappearances and spooky phenomena. And when monsters start stalking each of these kids, they have to band together and team up and try and survive the night before the monsters get them. I wrote this book for kids who love scary stuff, like I did when I was a little kid. Um, I used to read Goosebumps religiously, Scary Stories Tell in the Dark, other books like that. And I just wanted to kind of provide an equivalent for kids of this day and age to have the kind of experience I had when I was a kid. Um, I really hope that lots of kids read Scare Waves and really enjoy it, and uh, it gives them a fright. Hi, my name is Alex Gino, and I am excited to tell you about my new book, Green. Green takes place in the same world as Melissa and Rick. Kids are in middle school now, and Green is a non-binary kid who is happy with their life, happy with their family, happy with their friends. Green is really confident and really thinks that they've done a great job of figuring out who they are as a non-binary seventh grader, but they're also in seventh grade. So they're dealing with changing bodies, they're dealing with periods, they're dealing with first crushes on a straight kid. And what does that mean? Oh, and of course there's also a play. So they're putting on uh, The Wizard of Oz for a little bit of special queer culture and history. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for listening. Hello readers, I'm Deborah Hopkinson, author of the spy mystery novel, The Plot to Kill the Queen. So this is Little Rue and Daphne, and Little Rue plays Mousekin in the story. She's the brave but not very bright companion of our lead character, 13-year-old Amelia Bassano, who's a lute player, a spy, and an aspiring playwright. Since this book is historical fiction, Amelia and other characters were inspired by real people. Amelia even meets another young playwright whose name you might know, William Shakespeare. The plot to kill a queen takes place in England in 1582, when Queen Elizabeth I was on the throne. Elizabeth loved music, the arts, and theater. Everything was going pretty well for the queen, except for one thing. Even though she's locked up her arch rival, Mary Queen of Scots, in a creepy old castle, Mary and her supporters keep trying to plot to overthrow Elizabeth. It's up to Amelia and Mousekin to save the day. So I hope you enjoyed the plot to kill a queen. And remember, keep reading and writing. Goodbye. Hi everyone, I'm Wendy Shang and I am the author of Bubble Trouble. At my house, we love Bobo. My personal favorite is right here, Taro Milk Tea. In this new book, when Chloe Wong, who is a total neat takes an innocent trip to the new Bobo shop, all sorts of trouble begins. She should be staying away because she needs to save her money for the school field trip. And plus, this really annoying boy from school works there. Unfortunately, this boy, Henry Lee, always seems to know the perfect drink to make for Chloe. When Chloe gets banned from the shop for totally unfair reasons, she decides to open her own boba business. I actually interviewed one of my kid's friends who worked in a boba shop to find out what it was like. And we may have taken a few trips there just for research. This book has best friends a really large rescue dog, an inventor dad, a feisty aunt, and a family secret. Check it out. Hi, Gordon Corman here, and I am thrilled to tell you about my new book, Mixed Up. It's about a couple of kids, not best friends, they don't go to the same school, they don't know each other, and yet they suddenly become aware that they have memories 
they're pretty sure never happened to them. Almost like they're getting somebody else's memories, and they have to use those memories as clues to track each other down, figure out what's happening to them, and how can they reverse it? I guess I got the idea because I was thinking about how memory is reliable. At least, we think it should be, right? You live your life, and the events are immediately tucked away in memory. Except, what if it doesn't work that way? What can you do if your memories suddenly aren't your own? I hope you enjoy Mixed Up. Our graphics fall 23 season is packed with adventure and heart. In a few minutes, you'll hear about some exciting debuts and the return of the series that started it all, Bone. First though, I'd like to tell you about a few books in continuing series. Grace and Friends return for a new adventure in the second installment of the best-selling City of Dragons series, Rise of the Shadowfire. Grace learns that Dai Jiang is searching for an ancient relic that will subjugate the dragons. The team must get to Paris to stop the plan, but their new ally, Dr. Kim, may not be all she appears, and Dai Jiang has formidable allies of his own, a strangely familiar accomplice and a terrifying, powerful dragon that could threaten all of Paris. Cat Kid Comic Club Influencers is coming November 28th. The story is hysterical, thought-provoking, and full of action-packed mini-comics, including Frogzilla vs. Mecha Frogzilla, Robochubs, and Two Birds, all showing the value of viewing the world with a positive attitude. Alice Oseman's Heartstopper is a New York Times bestseller, hit Netflix series, and now there is an eagerly awaited fifth volume. Nick and Charlie are very much in love, they finally said those three little words, and Charlie has almost persuaded his mom to let him sleep over at Nick's house. But with Nick going off to university next year, is everything about to change? We will all find out on December 12th. Hi, I'm Neil Schusterman, the author of Courage to Dream. Hello, my name is Andres Vera Martinez. I am the illustrator of Courage to Dream. The idea of telling stories that relate to the Holocaust through fantasy was quite a challenge. I mean, how do you tell stories about such a difficult subject and yet incorporate something like fantastical elements? The fantastic elements remind me of my early love of Marvel Comics. Superheroes having great power comes through Encourage to Dream, and I try to channel that energy into my artwork. At the end of each story, there is a section that talks about what actually happened and hopefully will create interest in the subject for readers. I found researching the rich details of the story fun. The historical aspect had me looking for photos of architecture, clothing, and landscapes of the time. As I was working on it, I, I really started to feel that this was an important book because this is a, a way of bringing the truth to young readers that will engage them and make them want to find out more. It felt as if I was on an exciting journey when illustrating Courage to Dream. I hope you feel the same way when you have a chance to read it. Hi, my name is Jess Walton, and I'm the author of graphic novel Stars in Their Eyes, which I created with Australian artist Ashka. Maisie is 14, and she's on her way to her very first fan con with her mum, Jo. Like me, she's an amputee with chronic pain and anxiety. When she gets to the fan con, she runs into volunteer Ollie and Sparks Fly, and they connect while dealing with daggy parents, TV star no-shows, and all the fun and chaos of a fan con. It was very important for me to draw the details of Maisie's and Jessica's experience accurately. I asked Jess for some movement videos, which I then used as reference. This added real authenticity when depicting scenes from Maisie's everyday life, such as walking around with a prosthetic leg, getting out of the car, or sitting on a beanbag. Though Jess and I have still never met in person, I feel a great connection to them and their characters. And I'm so very proud of the book that we have made together. I hope you will enjoy it. Hi, I'm Zachary Sterling, and I'm a Filipino-American comic book artist and author from Portland, Oregon. Mabuhay is a story about first-generation Filipino siblings, JJ and Altea. And 
they're just trying to balance surviving middle school and working at their family's food cart. All the while, they're constantly getting lectures and hearing these folk tales they've heard a million times from their parents. And one day, when monsters and magic and witches from these same stories end up threatening their family, it's up to JJ and Altea to embrace their culture and who they are to try to save them. I wrote Mabuhai as a love letter to all of the stories and food and culture from my family that I got growing up, but also wanting to belong to the culture that's outside of your home. Hello, I'm Jeff Smith, the creator of the Bone graphic novel series for graphics and Scholastic. A few years ago, we realized that there was a few orphan stories that hadn't made it into the graphics of Bone canon. So we created a, a book called Bone Tall Tales, which included not only the stories that, uh, that, were, that we hadn't seen in a while that were out of print, but some brand new stories. Here we are a few years later, and we've got a few more orphan stories and some brand new stories uh, for something we're calling More Tall Tales. We have stories about uh, the origin of the rat creature's obsession with rat, with uh, with quiche. We have uh, we have Big Johnson Bone going to the moon. Uh, we have uh, we have a story that takes place when the bones go from the valley through the desert on their way home. Some of those adventures. It's a really fun book. I'm very excited that it's coming. It's going to come out in September, and I can't wait for people to see it. Hi. It's David Levithan, and I'm here to kick off the YA portion of our Fall 23 preview. Before we get to some books with characters who are unfamiliar to you, I have two books to talk about with characters who may be very familiar to you. First up is Alice Oseman's This Winter, which is a wonderful novella featuring characters we know from Heartstopper and Solitaire. Yes, I'm talking about brother and sister, Tori and Charlie Spring. And this book is really wonderful because it talks about how the holiday time is a time of coming together, but it's also a time of challenges. And that sometimes when you're not in the mood for everybody to be around, you really need to, to open up to a select group of people in order to get through a hard holiday. On a different note, we have Shadow Coven, which is the return of S. Isabel to the world she started building in the witchery. And she's done what I love so much about the best of speculative fiction for YA in that in this book, the world gets so much deeper and so much more challenging and the friends are put to the test in ways that just left me both frantically turning the pages to see what would happen and gasping when what happened did actually happen. So enough of me talking, the people you really wanna hear are the authors. So I'm now gonna hand it over to the authors to talk about their book. Hi, I'm Ryan LaSala. I am the author of The Honeys, and I'm here to tell you about my next YA horror novel, Beholder, a dark, glittering trap of a novel that I like to describe as Final Destination meets Martha Stewart. Beholder is about a kid named Ethan who has to use his uncanny ability to rewind mirrors, seeing everything the mirrors have seen before, to investigate a series of seemingly spontaneous murders and suicides plaguing the art world of New York City. But beware, there is always a cost to looking, and some things once seen cannot be unseen, and something lurks in the mirrors waiting for Ethan to notice it. Beholder really is an exploration of the darkest corners of the mind, and while it pains me to write something so scary, I am so excited that you are here to explore those corners with me. <laughs> this book also combines two of my favorite hobbies, which are interior design and trespassing. <laughs> I hope you love Beholder as much as I loved writing it, and I cannot wait to hear your screams from afar. I will see you on the other side of the looking glass. Hi, this is Sharon Cameron, and I am so excited to be here to tell you about my newest novel for Scholastic, Artifice, the story of Issa de Smit, a girl raised in the glittering world of art, a world dimmed and destroyed by the Nazi invasion of the Netherlands. But Issa decides to fight back by funding a ring of the Dutch resistance, a ragtag group of students and her former best friend dedicated to smuggling the last Jewish babies out of Amsterdam Amsterdam and into safety. And how will she fund it? By selling art. 
an exquisite, priceless Vermeer, a forged Vermeer, and to none other than Hitler himself, tricking the Nazis into paying for the rescue of the very children they are trying to annihilate. Artifice is about beauty, about our search for beauty and how we can find it and how we can create beauty for ourselves, even inside an ugly, ugly world. So I hope you enjoy Artifice. Hello. My name is Francisco Stork, and I am the author of I Am Not Alone. I Am Not Alone is a story of Alberto and Grace. Alberto is an undocumented immigrant from Mexico working in Brooklyn. And as the story starts, he has begun to hear a voice that is often critical. Grace is a valedictorian on her way to Princeton and on to, and on to medical school. And when Alberto and Grace meet, their love is immediate and deep. But then Alberto is found at a scene of a crime and all the evidence points towards him. And Alberto himself is not sure whether he is responsible or not, given his diminishing mental capacity. Grace then must decide whether to risk her brilliant future for this love that she has begun to feel for Alberto. I Am Not Alone is a story of love. It's a story of hope. It's a story of community, which I think you will find very beautiful and powerful. Hi, I'm Sabina Khan, and I'm the author of What a Desi Girl Wants, coming July 18th. Uh, it's a story about reconnecting with culture and your family, and it's also a story about um, the decisions we often have to make for love and how we sometimes have to get out of our own way in order to find what's truly important to us. I wrote this story because I wanted to work on something light and funny and sweet with a ton of heart and all about family and uh, relationships and identity. And I chose Agra as the setting because that's where my mother was born and I have a very um, strong connection to it. Um, so I hope that you will give this story a try and that you will enjoy what a Desi girl wants um, when it comes out this summer. If there's one thing to know about me, it's that I love nonfiction. It's a way to learn so much about the world around us. With content, of course, but also by helping us be more media literate. Who's the author? What are the sources? How can we tell what is fact versus opinion? What are the truths we get from fiction versus nonfiction? In this era, it's more important than ever to help young readers think critically about the information they're receiving. And you can start early with our great nonfiction library publishing series and picture books before moving into a more sophisticated space with Scholastic Focus, which provides narrative nonfiction aimed at middle grade and young adult readers. So we all know that kids are obsessed with animal facts and this new series is made for them. Animal Coverings focuses on five different body coverings and gives vital information about how different coverings help with body temperature, protection, and survival. Plus, gorgeous illustrations, sidebars, photos, and back matter will keep the learning going. The last time I presented to you, I told you how obsessed I was with our survival books because of our awesome True Book series, Survival Skills, and how I felt like I still had a thing or two to learn. Well, sign me up again, because our new True Book series is money. These books will give kids insight into financial literacy and how our economy works, basic concepts of finance and smart money management. Titles include What is Money, Making and Saving Money, What Banks Do with Money, and the one I'm afraid I somehow seem to be best at, Spending Money. And as promised, we don't stop at great series. Coming up, you'll hear from a few favorites on our fall list. Hi, my name is Eddie Chukalait, and I'd like to tell you about my new book, This Indian Kid, forthcoming in September from Scholastic. It's a memoir about growing up Creek and Cherokee in Oklahoma, attending 13 different schools in many towns, and being shuttled between living with my mother or my grandparents, Granny and Homer. One day in sixth grade, my uncle said something to my best friend Lonnie that I've always remembered to this day from the shame and embarrassment of my uncle's actions 
spring this book, this Indian kid. And despite what happened that day, Lonnie and I remain good friends almost 50 years later. I hope you'll buy a copy of the new book and read more from this Indian kid. Hi, I'm Joanna Ho. I'm the author of On the Tip of a Wave. And hi, I'm Katya Chen, and I'm the illustrator. So On the Tip of a Wave is the story of Ai Weiwei, with a particular focus on his work in Germany, where he collected life jackets of refugees, and he created this beautiful installation to really call attention to the refugee crisis. We looked at a lot of photo reference. We looked at, you know, there's like a lot more research behind the scenes and a lot more went into obviously capturing his likeness, which actually is, is not hard to do because he has a quite an iconic face. One of the things that I wanted to do was create a palette that was symbolic of the refugee crisis. The orange neon of the life jacket became sort of the through line that was hope throughout the whole book. And then also the blue was linking back to old dynasty, like Chinese dynasty. And I know Ai Weiwei actually incorporated one of the vases in one of his performance pieces. Thank you so much for listening. And we hope that as you read it and share it, it inspires you and others to really extend your hands um, with humanity to those around you. Hi. I'm Denise Lewis Patrick, the author of Justice Katanji, the story of U.S. Supreme Court Justice Katanji Brown Jackson. Many young readers will recognize her name and may know how special she is. She's a working mom, she's a loving daughter, a big sister, and a good friend. And she comes from a family that has always supported and encouraged her, even from when she was a small girl, to be her best self, even when things got hard. I think readers will be engaged from the first moment they see Kim Holt's smiling cover portrait and vivid interior illustrations. I'm really proud to share Justice Katanji with young readers and to share with them words that her father said to her, you can be anything.